हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर वेरी बेसिक फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ जनरल एनाटॉमी वी आर ग्लैड दैट यू लाइक आवर इनिशिएशन एंड सपोर्टेड अस वी विल बी कवरिंग द मिनिमम इंफॉर्मेशन दैट अ न्यू अर मेडिको शुड नो सो दैट दे डू नॉट फील नोब इन द कॉलेज इन द फर्स्ट क्लास इन एडिशन टू दिस इंट्रोडक्शन वीडियो वी विल बी कवरिंग वेरियस ऑर द टॉपिक्स ऑफ एनाटोमी सिंस एनाटोमी इज द फाउंडेशन ऑफ बेसिक साइंस एंड रिलेटिवली अ वास्ट सब्जेक्ट we brought you the initial lectures on anatomy but we promise you we will be bringing videos on other topics too that will help you for an easy entry into medicine so stay subscribed for more videos in today's lecture we will be highlighting upon the basic topics of anatomy let's start with the basic definition of anatomy human anatomy is the science which deals with the structure of human body You might as a fresher find the word dissection very interesting and end up confusing it with the word anatomy. But let me tell you, they are both entirely different. Both has the similar meaning though their origin are different, but similar does not mean same. Anatomy is the vast discipline of studying the characteristics of structure in three-dimensional space, whereas dissection is merely a technique and a part of anatomy. where you will be getting a dead body to cut and study its inner and outer parts anatomy can be classified in many ways and this is one of the easiest classification which includes macroscopic microscopic and radiographic techniques macroscopic study means what you see with bare eyes and more you see more you learn you will be taught the shape size relations of the body structures The next one is microscopic which means studying the structure under a microscope. It is also called histology. The last one is radiographic and it uses other spectrum of light other than visible rays and you will be studying visceral organs in living body. Since you can't dissect a living body, technological advancement has helped us to see the inside of the human body. You will be taught about them. Now talking about the subdivisions of anatomy In a simpler sense, it means either you are studying a dead or an alive. There is this term called embalmment. This is an act of preserving the dead bodies and mostly formalin is used. Believe me, it's going to make you cry when you see a dead body, not because of the empathy, but because of the pungent formalin. Jokes apart. There is a saying in anatomy that the dead teaches the alive. And yes, in cadaveric anatomy You are going to learn by dissecting each organ and part of the body. The dissection can be carried out by two approaches. One of them which is regional approach which will include head and neck, upper limbs, thorax, abdomen and the lower limbs. For example, cut the limbs and study its bones, the muscles attached to the bones, the blood vessels running through it and the nerves present. whereas in systemic approach you will be studying a system for example gastrointestinal system you will learn all the organs in the gastrointestinal system for example intestines stomach and the liver in general practice none of the approach singly is practiced and both approach coexist and helps one another after 2 years of your beginning you will be posted in the hospital to learn and yes this time you will be dealing with the live bodies which is now called as the living anatomy here you will be learning the use of anatomical landmarks how to locate the organs by placing the hands on the skin its approximate measurement and if there is a pathology that has increased the size of the organ you will also be taught about reading x rays ct scans and other investigation methods dealing with the visualization of the visceral organs also there are other subdivisions known as embryology physical anthropology embryology is the study of developmental changes inside the womb whereas physical anthropology is the study of variations of external features of different races the clinically important subdivisions of anatomy include applied anatomy and the surface anatomy also known as topographic anatomy the applied anatomy includes the use of anatomical knowledge in medical and surgical practice Surface anatomy deals with the study of deeper parts of the body in relation to skin. It is also helpful in clinical practice and surgical operations. You need to locate the site of the incision. This is where it plays an important role. 
most of the words you will come across in your medical life will be derived from the two languages those are greek and latin i said most of not all of since there are also some french word and some other language word included which is beyond the scope of this lecture there were these two anatomists galen and versalius who wrote books which were printed in greek and latin language being pioneer everyone followed them and these two languages were used for nomenclature of the term used in anatomy now under the language of anatomy various planes positions movement and terminologies in relation to various regions are explained in subsequent time let's begin with positions the anatomical position the must know position for a fresher you'll let you know why is the position in which a person stands straight eyes looking forward towards horizon arms by the side of the body palms facing forward and both the feet together supine is the position in which a person is lying on his back arms by the side palms facing upward and the feet put together prone is the position in which a person is lying on his or her face chest and abdomen in lithotomy position the person lies on his or her back with the legs up and the feet supported over something this position is most commonly used in delivery of a child and study of the perineal organs talking about planes there is mid sagittal or median plane that passes through the midline of the body dividing the body into equal right and left halves in some books it is also called sagittal plane The coronal plane passes perpendicular to the mid sagittal plane and divides the body into anterior and posterior halves. The transverse plane divides the body into upper and lower halves. Relations help you describe the locations of the organs. It shows how far how aligned an organ is in relation to the other organs. Roughly speaking of which ventral is your belly side while dorsal is your back side. Consider as ventral B or bhuri in Nepali and dorsal D for dhad in Nepali I used to remember it like that back then Okay let me give you an example The upper surface of the tongue is dorsal whereas the lower surface is a ventral surface Taste buds are present on the dorsal surface Proximal is close to the root of the limb whereas distal is away from the root Here root means the point of attachment For example, your wrist are proximal to your elbow joint than your fingers. People often get confused saying more easily reachable part to be proximal and the other distal. As for example, you might think your hands are closer to your heart than your shoulder, but actually shoulder is more proximal to heart than hands. In this case, the heart is considered as the root. Now, cranial also known as rostral is towards head. whereas caudal means away from the head or tail superficial means close to skin or body surface and deep means inner to the body surface ipsilateral means on the same side of the body as the anterior structure example your right hand and your right leg are ipsilateral to each other whereas contralateral means on opposite side of the body from the other structure For example, your right hand and your left leg. Invagination means a projection inside, whereas a whereas an evagination is a projection outward. Palmar aspect is the surface having palm, whereas the dorsal aspect or the opposite of palmar aspect is the back of the palm. Flexor aspect is the front or anterior of the upper limb when you are standing in an anatomical position. whereas the extension aspect is back of the upper limb we'll be discussing in more details about the movements topic in our next lecture on joints and we'll be explaining these movements in the later part of the video to make your idea easier on supination and pronation let me share you my experience one of my professor once said prince pronates and gives blessing to the people The blessing position is called pronation of the hand as you can see here whereas beggar supinates 
that position is called supination of the hand right now let's talk about eversion and inversion watch the clip carefully and imagine a line passing through the center of the body and now imagine the clip going out from the axis will be eversion revealing your plantar surface and inversion is the opposite as you can see here eversion and inversion right so i guess that makes you clear now talking about the angular movements there are angular movements shown in the clips above imagine a door in extension the surfaces get apart while in flexion they approach nearer in other words flexion is also known as decreasing the joint angle as you can see in this clip the surfaces this surface and this surface they are coming close to each other called as flexion and now they are going getting back farther from each other called as extension as you can see the joint angle now it is increasing called as extension and now it is decreasing right so flexion is called as decreasing the joint angle this is flexion and this is extension now circumduction it is a combined movement of extension abduction flexion and adduction in sequence now as i have already talked about flexion and extension let me tell you about abduction and adduction abduction since there is a b i used to remember it as taking the limbs outward or bahira and adduction means taking the limb inward towards the root so abduction and adduction in the combination of flexion and extension is called as circumduction thank you so much for staying with us throughout the video hope it was helpful to you all we have more surprises in the description box below do check it and subscribe us for more videos and you can also follow us on tiktok id metforia Bye